Now let's talk a little bit about a horrible word, MTF. You can't escape it. You hear it every day. And you scratch your head and say, I know I heard that once. And what does it mean? Well, it means these three words, modulation transfer function. You don't need to remember all that I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to make it simple. But just to have a basic understanding that it is a fundamental measurement that is absolutely crucial to any assessment of resolution. Or should I say, what you actually see, which is picture sharpness. But certainly those three words beg two questions. What are we modulating? What are we transferring? Modulation transfer function. And that's what I'll simply explain. And I'll start with a lens. This is very important. Very, very important when you come to consider resolution and sharpness. I'm postulating a lens, looking at a scene. And I'm making a nice, simple scene, low frequency, black and white bars. And let's say they've got a great high contrast. I've just picked 600 to 1. The lens looks at that. And what the lens task is, transfer that object seen from the real world into an object image coming out of the lens. And hopefully, that object image would be exactly that if we had a perfect lens. There is no such thing as a perfect lens. We are the most imperfect science. So we cannot get 600 to 1 through. I'm saying, OK, let's say we got a terrific lens. It's still going to be a little shy. We lose a little contrast, even at the lowest um, uh, frequencies of a black and white high contrast input. This is very important. Now, the language that's used by the techie people is the scene luminance has been transferred into a image illuminance. Forget that. You don't need to know that. Now, here's the bad thing is if we increase the frequency or the fineness of the detail of the black and white bars, and that is transferred through the lens, guess what? It comes through at less contrast than that lower frequency. True of every lens on the planet. True of if I pick up a Coke bottle, any piece of glass, and I put light through it, it will lose contrast increasingly as I raise the detail fineness. So the transferred contrast is being altered as we move up in higher and higher frequencies. And it's the variations in transfer detail contrast that constitute this transfer function. It's that variation. The mathematicians like to call that a function. So transfer function is how your detail contrast is behaving as you raise the fineness, if you will, of that detail. So you put enough of them in, you get this profile or this modulation of the transfer of contrast, hence modulation transfer function. MTF is a measurement of how contrast is passing through the lens as it changes its spatial detail. Now it goes into the camera, and the camera is a sample system as we talked about. It's going to sample, and it has an MTF. So when you look at your camera output, it is the behavior MTF of the lens multiplied by the behavior. John will go into that uh, a little more detail. The formal definition of lens contrast is a very low frequency measurement. And then the formal definition of resolving power is where you just fail to distinguish between the black and white. Now, if you measure those on the output of the lens and plot them, you get a curve. And it's called the modulation transfer function curve, the MTF curve. That curve is far more important than you might have appreciated. And it's one of the reasons that there's an enormous confusion when we talk about resolution, sharpness, and what we see. Because what you see is the MTF of the lens multiplied by the MTF of the camera. This projector that we're looking at, that projector up there, it's a sample device. And it's got optics in it. It's got a curve. So all of these curves. And then finally, your eye and my eye and brain has the most complex curve of them all. It's very, very complex. So what we actually see is the multiplication of all of these. 
Now I'm going to from here on make a, a distinction. What we talk about sharpness from this point out, it's sharpness as we know in our world of what we see in the cinema environment or the television viewing environment in the living room, distant viewing. What I'm seeing here, looking at a screen that's 12 inches from me, very different. I can see things here that you could not possibly see where you're seeing them if they were put up there. And that's for a reason that you'll see in a moment. But we're going to talk about distant viewing and perceptual sharpness. So linking MTF with sharpness. I want to introduce you to another old boy. This guy worked for many, many years at the RCA labs. He's a great scientist. And all through the 50s and the 60s, he was studying photo photographic imaging and television imaging, trying to relate the two, trying to find a common lingua franca to describe attributes of imaging and measurement techniques in imaging. He also came up with some fundamentals that he derived mathematically and then proved by a very, very extensive, over many years, subjective testing of huge numbers of people. And he found that this MTF curve had an importance that had never been appreciated. I'm going to give it to you verbally first, and you're going to scratch your head and say, now what the heck does that mean? That per what you see on your eye and your brain, when you look at a screen some distance away, is proportional to the square of the area under the MTF curve. Let me explain it. Here's your MTF curve. That could be a lens, or it could be a lens multiplied by a camera. You squared it. What that means is that's a mathematical process. I take the 90% point, 90 by 90 is 81, 70 by 70 is 49. I just do a mathematical square of the curve. And what Shade said was, this is what's important. And the shape of this curve and the area under that curve obviously is very dependent on the shape of that curve. So what he said is, this is what's stimulating your eye and your brain. And it's not, am I a thousand lines of resolution or two thousand lines of resolution. That's meaningless. You can't see this stuff out here from where you're sitting. You are stimulated. And know what has happened when you square the curve. The curve moved to the left. So the visual percentage of sharpness is weighted towards these lower and mid-band frequencies and a lot less. See what happened to the curve down here? It dropped way down. So this, is, this is almost doing nothing to your eye and your brain. And it says that in any choice of a lens, any choice of a camera, any choice of the marriage of a lens and camera, pay high attention to the shape of this curve. Because the bigger that belly, the higher the sharpness that any human being is going to see. And ultimately, that's what we all want. It says that a curve like this, and by the way, this is sort of the way a lot of uh, video systems are, like the digital ones I talk about. You have a certain MTF, and then we chop off with a filter. And then you have something like this, which could be uh, a real high-resolution camera, or it might be motion picture film negative, that has a long tail that goes out and out and out. This will be seen in an environment like this as sharper than something like this. Now, obviously, there's films that go way out there, and they will be sharper than that. But I'm just saying, if you have two MTFs like that, the curve A will be visibly. Anybody will see that difference. And what it says is that picture edge sharpness is largely determined by how high the curve is at these lower frequencies. Picture textures largely determined by the mid-band and higher. And then up here, resolving power is of no interest in cinema and television viewing. That can be of very high interest in reconnaissance type photography, where you might be searching down in grain to find some detail that's at a very, very low level of information. But that's not what we're talking about. Now, some examples. What do I mean by edge sharpness? Images like this, which are rich in edges and not so rich in textures, you will, that picture will be reproduced by a lens and a camera that has a great big belly, a good high MTF at the lower and mid-band frequencies. And that's really what you want. You do not want to be going into the camera and turning up the digital enhancement to get these edges reproduced with clarity and no softness in them. You want 
inherent softness coming from a good MTF. That's the takeaway. Now, another example is something like this, rich in edge sharpness. Also got some textures. So we have scenes that have them both. We have scenes that might have an enormous amount of textual, uh, uh, sorry, of edge sharpness, some textural. But you look at a picture like that, there's just thousands of edges. And a picture like that, by the way, is extremely difficult for digital cameras. You really do need very high resolutions and very, very good MTFs. And the better the lens, the better your reproduction of that's going to be, because image enhancement is going to have a very, very difficult time uh, creating that without all sorts of artifacts of ringing, et cetera. Picture textural detail. I'm, again, I'm simulating here, but obviously there's picture edge sharpness here, but there's textural detail in the stone, in the denim, in the denim, in the hair, in the flesh. Very low amplitude, but tremendous uh, richness in the image if that can be reproduced. This one, the wallpaper, the, the wood, the different wools, the denims, the facials, the hair, the, 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 the stuff behind the marble, etc. Textural detail. On a medium shot like that, standard definition television on a shot like that would do a very nice job with the edge sharpness of that image, but you would lose most of this textural detail. High definition today with a good lens, a good high definition camera, will do very good justice to an image like that. I think you've all seen it. And it's often said that the distinguishing difference between high definition and standard definition is the far superior reproduction of textural information, hopefully also excellent edge sharpness. Then you get scenes that have a mixture of textures and sharpness. Sharpness, definitely the etching, if you will, of these ladies against the background. You want those edges to be clean, sharp, distinctive. But then you want the textures, of which there are many, facial, hair, clothing, all different textures. You want those reproduced. And at that point, I'm going to hand over to my colleague who will take you into the deep, dark bowels of MTF. Thank you. <laughs>